Hi, I'm Mario Reese, and this is the Mario Reese Show. How did you get started in the uh, in the film industry? Uh, I uh, I saw a role for a police officer on National Geographic. And at the time, I was working in a print company. I was stressed out. I didn't. I felt like I wasn't doing enough, as far as artistically. And I was just, you know, I guess you can say, looking for a way out. You know, some people look for a way out for different ways. Right. For me, it's like artistic. Like, what can I do to express myself more? to be, to, to, you know, like, just to express myself more. Right. And for me, um, you know, I took Taekwondo and, and I did, you know, I, I learned how to draw, you know. I mean, I did a bunch of stuff, but I, I just wanted more. Growing up, did you see a lot of filming going on in, in, in your town or? In uh, my town? Or in the area, the, like the general area of uh, D.C., Virginia, and all no, that. Yeah. No, because at the time, it was fresh to me. It was This thing was fresh to me. I said, man, I just completed a project for National Geographic. The director shot it, boom, done. The next day, I go to work. And here I am at a 9 to 5. I'm like... All right, back to normal life. So to me, I said, well, this excites me more. Then I find out, hey, you can actually get paid for this. Is this something that you want to do? Is this something that you want to do or is it just a hobby or you want to try it out? So within time, you, you know, you keep, if you like it, if you like a hobby, right? Right, you keep doing it. You keep it. doing yeah. it, right? Right. So eventually that hobby, you either say, ah, I don't want to do it anymore. It's just, I tried it. I'm going to try a different hobby. Right. But for me, it was different. I tried it and I said, I'm going to try to keep, be keep getting better at it. I left my job two years ago and I'm done. I'm like, this is what, something I want to pursue. And it's good. And just, you know, just for people that, you know, that, you know, might be watching the, the, the program. Um, that's just it, you know, is it's, at some point you're going to get to that, if you continue on your path of trying to achieve what you're trying to achieve, yeah. um, you'll get there. It, it's a struggle. No matter what you decide to do, what industry you decide to go into, it's going to be a struggle. You know, what I learned from doing research and seeing what other actors are uh, we're, you know, we're, we're saying about pursuing your dreams is that you have to take that leap of faith. But if you give yourself a plan B, you're already, you're already giving yourself a, 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 a reason to fail. Being an actor is, is a little tough, man, because I mean, all of us has to pay bills. But if you keep pursuing and doing what you like and you're checks are coming in you keep going it eventually pays off yeah st stay uh, stay consistent yeah with with your pursuit yeah and then you can also you know um you can venture out and learn acting and then say hey you know what i've been in front of the camera let me direct so you can do that, you know. You can start directing, and, and then you can also jump into writing. That's the cool thing about this business. Going to school to study acting versus just gaining experience from hands-on experience, you know, starting from the bottom. Yeah. You know, doing the background work, doing the, you know, just working your way up the ladder. How do you feel about that? Well, personally, I feel that 
going to school is a good thing. You know, say, hey, I'm going to take some acting classes. Cool. Took some acting classes. Okay. You're there, right? And then someone who is, knows they got talent, and maybe it sound, might sound cocky to people, and be like, I can do it without taking acting classes, and then do it. But who's to say, right? Who's to say that this kid that learned acting is going to do a job when it comes to doing the action? Right, right. And we go back to the same thing as far as like, there's a difference from knowing and doing. It's just simple as that. There's a difference from knowing and doing. I can teach you as a teacher how to, hey, you know, doing this and use this technique or whatever. Uh, which is good. I have nothing against that, you know. And have someone raw come in there, pure talent, pure raw, and perform this thing. And I've seen it many times. I've seen it many times. I've seen a no, uh, someone with no experience do a nice job than someone that's been taking classes. Yeah. I think it all depends on the individual, though. I mean, I do think at some point, I, me personally, I, I'm going to take some classes just to get a feel of the understanding the foundations of acting. Because I can sit here and read a book, you know. Right. So, yeah, use this technique and look closely and whatever, right? I mean, we're all, we're all originals, man. Yeah. You know? But I think that for me, and I'm speaking for me, I think that the, a good actor is telling the truth, you know? Maybe the kid that did study acting and, you know, has achieved all this, he might, he definitely knows his fund fundamentals, which is good. You know, he has coaching, which is good. And I think that that's the important part about, I think, taking acting classes. I would like a coach to personally tell me, and this is speaking from, I think, uh, a point of uh, being intrigued by what will happen and how to mold them. If I say to you, hey, Mario, um, I want to be an action actor, <laughs> right? I want to be an action actor. You can't teach me that in class. Right. So. And, 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 and that's a good point. There, does that, do I make sense? Or? There's a difference. Yeah, there's a difference. Uh, <laughs> and, and and no offense, but personally, although I love action movies, but but I, I prefer, in, in terms of acting, I yeah. prefer dramatic pieces versus action because there is a difference between an action acting in action and acting in, in the drama piece. Right, right. Because right. it's two, two, two different worlds. Right. right. When you, when you, when they say method act, what, what comes to your mind? Or what, even if whatever comes to your mind, do you think that, what's your belief on that? On, on method acting? Yeah. I think it's great, but but I think, I think you can't just stick to one thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which I'm pretty sure that a lot of the big name actors put a little bit of everything in there. And I think anybody would tell you, from you know the veterans would tell you, it's a never ending learning process. Of course, you know. When they get hired, it's like, okay, I know they can do that because we know that they can do it. We've seen their work. Right. Uh, for people like us who are newer to the business, especially me, um, we really have to play by the, by the rules until we become, until people can actually see, okay, we know what he's capable of. Because if you look at actors like, you know, for example, uh, Eddie Murphy. Right. Eddie Murphy never went to school for acting. He's a natural. And there's many others out there that when they say action, okay, more than likely, they're going to let him do whatever he does because he's Eddie Murphy versus 
no, we want to do it this way because that's the way that it's taught in our textbooks. You know? Right. One of my goals is to work with Mark Wahlberg, Ben Affleck. Yeah. You know, yeah. Th those guys, man, especially like Ben Affleck because, you know, Ben Affleck is to me is kind of like my life that what I'm at right now because I'm learning the craft of acting, right? And he went on direct. The Town is one of my favorite movies that he's done. I mean, he's, he's done good work. Yeah. And the directing is like, man, you, you know, know he's a good director. The reason for me to do this type of program is for people on the come up, you know, in the business, to know that there's actually people out there that really, really care. Because it, it's... You'll hear time and time and again the business is brutal. You're gonna yeah. hear more no's than, than yes. Yeah, and I've been there, man. And I've yeah. been there, man. I've I heard tons of no's, man. I yeah. mean, but is that gonna stop me? No. It's not gonna stop me. Because I know that that's not if someone says no, then I look at it at, as a director's perspective. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I respect that. Like, you know, like everybody wants that part, right? Yeah. But like does the director see you in that part? No. And that's and that's something that, that I think every every beginning actor has to take into consideration. Correct. It's to not not to take it personal because it's not about that and that's why like I don't really take the whole typecasting thing serious because that's the nature of the business. I'm not gonna put Bozo the clown to play Superman because that's not he's not gonna fit the part. <laughs> So, Mario, how did you, in part one of Intruder, uh, do you think that the people who saw Intruder 1 liked the, liked the movie, even though we had a like, six-minute film? Yeah, it was, a, it was a pretty short film, uh, but I think, you know, people have to take into consideration that it's, it's a short film. Right. And, uh, you know, the minimum of a short film is, is five minutes, you know, five, six minutes. Um, I was actually impressed how fast you came up with the concept. You know, although, you know, a lot of people have done that uh, particular concept of, of uh, uh, you know, somebody breaking into your house or what have you. Yeah, yeah. But um, I think it, it, you know, I'm sure people would like to see more of that particular first story. And I think it does the job of obviously letting people wanting more, you know. Yeah. People want to see more, so. That was the idea behind it. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> so, me being new, and I guess, I guess I have to give a little bit of a backstory real quick before we, we wrap it up, is that when I was a kid, I used to record on a cassette tape, uh, you know, little stories. Uh, and, and make like different voices or whatever. Yeah. Not that I'm great at doing any like any type of voice, but I, you know, used my imagination. And when you when I played it back, it was like, oh, that's kind of that's kind of fun. Of course. Growing up as a kid, when I was when I was 12, 13 years old, into going into 13, we lived. Uh, in the Dominican Republic, where my parents are from. You know, I grew up here, but I lived there on and off. Okay. Uh, they used to own a video store. Oh, that's interesting. At the time, uh, so I was always into movies. Like, that was my thing. I used to work at, at their video store. You know, they made me, made me work at a young age. Not, you know, to teach me. <laughs> to that? teach me responsibility. Not, right. not to, like, you know, force me to work. <laughs> but, uh, they, uh, Part of the services that we did outside, outside of um, outside of renting videos, yeah. um, they they used to do uh, film weddings and birthday parties and things of that nature. That's interesting. Um, so when I turned thirteen, they sent me to a to take a, a, a videography uh, class or courses, you know. Uh, to learn, you know how to how to record, edit, and all that stuff. Right. To to so that I could work at the video store and do those things. Of course, at that young age, I had to have a chaperone with me. 
Right, right. <laughs> Which, you know, they had somebody who was, uh, I think, a cousin of my stepdad or something like mm. that. Gone into, you know, taking the leap of faith, quote unquote, into the business later in my life because I, I never really had that, uh, um, you know, somebody to tell me, okay, follow your dreams. It, it was more guidance, of, okay. It's more of a guidance. Yeah, it, it, my parents were, they were good business people, but they never really instilled in me of you follow your dreams, follow what your heart tells. But in terms of filmmaking, because you know, obviously I just did Intruder Two, uh, to your continuation to your to your first one. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't until I actually met you that something clicked. Something something clicked. Yeah, it was like well. Why am I not doing this? Because I am capable of. I know that I can do it. I've been doing this since I was a kid. You know, sometimes you meet people for that reason to to get you going. Yeah. You know what I'm Push saying? Push you a little bit. Open up that I. Right. Because it, it wasn't. Make a light bulb switch. Yeah. Because you know they always say like it, it, it's until you see somebody actually doing it. Yeah. That you know that it's that it's attainable. Yeah. Um, that's so correct. you know, with with Intruder One, you know, I like the I like the concept. I thought it was a cool concept. You know, it's, it's just like and uh, you know, it took us a minute, man, to get the uh, some scenes going. You know. Yeah, I, mean, I, I couldn't even come up with this thing now. Now because I've I've opened up that that part of me that that creative part that wasn't yeah that I had closed up for right. so long. So I kind of like look, now, Mario, you had that already yeah. in you. Right. You now need to like. Now I'm like, yeah, I'm just pumping them out now. Yeah. Right. Tell us, tell us a little bit about what can people expect on part two. Uh, well, part part two is is it's not necessarily a sequel to part one. It's it's more of a continuation of this particular character, the intruder, who is, you know, breaking into people's homes. <laughs> so yeah, uh, this particular. Uh, Intruder 2 revolves around uh, uh, a single father. You know, he gets a call from the alarm company and it's like, well, you know, he knows what, he, thinking he knows what the problem is, he goes home and, you know, gets surprised. So, and I'll leave it there. <laughs> that's that's a good way to end it, man. Well, part 1 is on Amazon. Like you said, it's a, it's a short, but it's, it's nicely done. I'm very proud of it. Um, we, we had a little challenge, but I'm, I'm, I'm happy with what you guys did. I can't wait to uh, see part two and see what you uh, came up with. And then I'll be uh, hopefully taking over part three. Yeah, absolutely. I'm looking forward to it.